Yeah. Right, everyone, we are back with Jackie. Jackie, how's it going? Good, thanks, yep. Good Did you like that? Straight into it, no, no major intro there. Just how are you getting on, Jackie? Yeah, all good, mate. Uh, good weekend. Watched a few matches, so delighted the football's back on. It is great to have it back. It was a long summer and, you know, there's football every day of the week at the moment and it's uh, going to be that way, I think, until the World Cup in, in November. So, excellent. We're going to have a chat about Celtics football, the weekend win over Ross County. We're going to look ahead to this Sunday against Kilmarnock. Some interesting comments from Ange as well and maybe the Champions League as well if we have time at the end. 3-1 win over Ross County at the weekend. I know you're just a, a generally very calm person, so I dare say you would have been quite calm even going into the last 10 minutes that we were going to get that goal. Yeah, I think, um, again, I was there, I was up at the game last season when they scored in the dying minutes with Ralston's header. So, no, I think they, they believe in, the players believe that they'll score, you know, and the manager's making changes as well, and I think that's the biggest thing. You look at this stage last year, you look at the team, you look at the bench and the backup, the options that he's got coming off the bench as well. So um, it fills you a lot more confidence there that you can change things and, and go for it. Um, and then I do think Ross County will, will be better than they were last year as well. I know they've lost the first two. They've had Hearts away in the first game and then Celtic at home. Probably... Uh, two tough games but I think they'll, they're a decent side they'll, they'll be okay this season Yeah they strike me as a team that are going to take points off quite a few sides that, that go up there later in the season I just want to touch on what you said there the fact that you know me as well I, I felt more relaxed going into the last 10 minutes than I did that game you know in December granted we didn't leave it until the 98th or 99th minute whatever it was um, but I did just feel generally much calmer that the team were going to get that chance it, is that you know a sign of, of you know where Celtic are at? Is it a sign of you know the fact that we've we've scored late in games before, and you always just feel that other opportunity is going to come? Yeah, I think the belief there, and you, you you've got um, confidence in the players. I've done it. The mentality will just keep going. I mean, there's there'll be games in. It's inevitable that you don't always get that, but you they have that belief with the players and the way that he wants to keep going. As I said. I mean, the options that he's got to, to bring on and the quality that he's got, um, you know, and this is before, obviously, the window closes as well. I, I, I still linked with more players coming in and players going out, so you expect that to be even stronger uh, by the window closing. Yeah. You must be chuffed. You picked Jota last week as the player to watch and he, he goes on and puts in that display, setting up three goals. Yeah. He's just brilliant. Is he the best player in Scottish football right now? Or, or just in general? Um, I mean, there's, he's, he's a different type. I think he's, you know, uh, I think he's up there with the quality. Um, you know, the fans love him. They love old, more old, probably old fashioned. It will take players on either side. He's great vision and his deliveries, and I think he's one that the, the fans love to watch. As a, as a, you know, as a fan, you like you like watching good players, and he's definitely that. And I think. You know, you've you seen glimpses of it last year. You know, he picked up a little injury, like a few of them did. But uh, I do believe this will be his, his season that he'll, he'll really step up again, like I said last week, because he's not on loan anymore. He's Celtic's player, so he's at home, uh, and that should help him. I love the fact that he stayed on his feet for the first goal, because the challenge came in and he could easily have you know dangled a leg out, gone down and, and won the penalty. But I guess that says a lot about him, the fact that that wasn't in his mind. It was all about getting past the player and, and cutting it back for Kyogo. Yeah, yeah, and I, I like that. I like that side of it as well. He's, you need to see other ones any touch at all, and they'll throw themselves down. And and uh, it's nice to have that that extra bit that they just want to. It's, it's more like a, a youthful thing, you know. They want to keep. They want to do well. They want to score goals. And, you know, they want to win the right way. Um, and it's it's good. It's good to see. You know, it's. To say, I've been really impressed with him so far since he's came back. What's the next step for him? But for me, it's it's looking at the really big games and, and delivering in them because, you know, you can maybe look last season at the Derby games. I know he scored in the last one, but he wasn't really prominent in, in too many of them. 
Um, maybe that's slightly harsh. I mean, he was good in the 3-0 game, but in terms of you know assisting and scoring, he, he didn't really do it too often. Um, European matches as well. I remember the Leverkusen games, he was pretty good, but other than that, he maybe wasn't great. Is, it, is that the next step for him in terms of the derby matches and shining yeah. in the Champions League? 100%. That's For me, that's where you're judged the most. You know, the, the derbies and European games. The rest, it's, you know, the the league games, everybody expects that anyway. They expect to be better, they expect to be sharper. And um, the Champions League one, you know, the, the, I agree with you what you're saying. There's a couple of games there, he wasn't, like the Bobo game, he was chasing the fullback rather than, you know, him getting at the fullback. That was a different, their, I was really impressed with their fullbacks when they played them. You know, and, and Jota and the other uh, on one side was actually chasing their fullback a lot of the game, and take so it takes all your, all the power out of his legs to go and get him at at, at their fullback. So this uh, that will be the biggest one, you know, Champions League when you're playing against the elite, um, because in the domestic games you probably see more teams that will double up on them. You know, the fullback there, the midfielder will help the fullback, but at the elite stage, the Champions League game. The left one v one, because you know the uh, the better defenders are quicker, they're stronger. So it'll be interesting to see how he handles that, and uh, if he can produce in that stage, it'll be it'll be great. It's exciting, isn't it? Just the even the best you know fullbacks in the world. I think Jota could give them a hard time in the Champions League. So it's uh, it's going to be amazing. Big Yens, which is what we're now calling him, scoring on his first start too. Great for him to, to score such a big goal. What did you actually make of his deb- his, his first start apart from that? Uh, I thought it was okay, yeah. I thought it was solid enough. And, and obviously, he did um, it one bit with the lad. He, he brought him down, uh, free kick and stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was good. Again, it's good for him to get that goal. Again, a good ball in from Jota. Uh, the, the thing I liked about there, everything that they've done, you know, the corners with free kicks, they do it quickly, so they, they don't get a chance to set up properly. You know, they took a quick corner, Dan, and they are the same with the, the third goal, they go and press, they don't have a chance to set up their, their shape. And I think, obviously, it's something that Ange is, is, is trying to get in. You know, even corners, it's just a quick shot corner across in before they, they get back in, so... No, I thought I thought it was good. I was quite impressed with him for his for his, his first game because it is quite a, a tough place to go. What would it be like playing against a team like that that takes corners and throw ins so quickly? You would just never stop, would you? Yeah, you'll probably see the ball boys if you're playing at home. The ball boys will be it won't be multi ball. They'll be uh, yeah, you know, taking their would, time. Would that and... be your instruction if you're still <laughs> Dundee United manager? You're playing against Andrew Celtic. Slow them down. Hundred <laughs> percent. Hundred um, percent, or if it's if it's other way about, you know, you you do these wee bits. If your team does that, then you're getting the ball boys to do it quickly for your team. But the other way yeah. about, you're, you know, you're you're slowing it down in the opposition half. So these little things there it can be a difference between winning and losing. Yeah. Um, anything else, kind of, from Saturday in terms of individual performances? Anything else you took away from the game? No, I think. Um, I think just the actual overall the team, the energy, you know, the the pressing, you see it with the, the third goal especially, even though they were two one up, they're still pressing really high up, winning the ball back and moving the ball quickly. Um again, like last week I think they had twenty odd chances, maybe twenty three chances of attempts at goal and that again as the weeks go on they'll get more clinical and sharper in that final third as well. Yeah. Some interesting comments from Ange after the game. I, I went into detail on them on Monday. He was pretty pleased, I think, with the, the day's work at, in Dingwall. Maybe go slightly against some of the questions he w- was being asked after the game. I felt they were maybe slightly uh, negatively slanted, let's just say. Did you ever find that as a manager, that frustration? You maybe feel you've watched a different game from what someone's asking you afterwards, that, that maybe you feel as if your team's not getting the credit they deserve? Most weeks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's. I mean, there's, there's the way the way it's done now. It's worse for Ange, you know, because they want to get a reaction. They want to get something from him because he's very, um, he's very articulate in how he comes across in his press conference, and he's very straight. You know, he, there's no nonsense from which I like. You know, he's not a politician. He's 
it just tells you straight. Uh, so there is ones that will they'll fire questions in to get a reaction of some sort or to make a headline because that's that's what they're there to do. Yeah, it just seems a bit strange because I think anyone who watched that game on Saturday would have would have seen you know a pretty convincing Celtic performance and in the end a victory. Yes, the the second goal only comes you know five six minutes from the end, but. If you look at the, the balance of that game, we were well on top there. So I found that a little bit strange, but Ange, you know, gave as good as he got. We should, should say, by the way, the next time Celtic play Ross County, it's the final day of this month. We'll have two stands for that game in the Cup, the North and East stand. So a bigger allocation there. Another interview from Ange yesterday was Celtic TV. One thing he did kind of mention is that he feels the team are almost going through an extended pre-season at the moment. That Those are the words he used. And he reckons that it's going to benefit us long term. It does feel to me like we're just putting in the groundwork at the moment and we're really going to see the, the benefit of that later in the season. For someone, you know, like me who never played at any sort of high level, just tell us, you know, what advantages are there of having extra time on the training ground? Yeah, especially when new players coming in. I think it's massive because, you know, you're, even at this time last year, you know, you're playing qualifiers when you're not ready. You know, the the, the, the pre-season games, you're, he's having a look at them for the first time. You know, you, you go back to last, last season, the way at Bristol City and games like that, you look at the starting lineup, then you look at Mitchell in game, I was at the Mitchell in game, and you look at the transformation, And but that's all done on the training field, how he's brought the team forward. It, it doesn't just happen on a Saturday. Um, so he's integrated that into his training, you know, and, and pushed it through really quickly, to be honest, because it normally takes a long time to get your team how you want to set them up, how they, they understand each other. Um, so with the new players coming in, they'll settle in quick uh, with the team and they've got opportunities there to go and work on things day to day, as well as the fitness. You know, they're, they're not playing two games a week at the moment, but that'll come in when it... When it does come in, you're hoping that the new players like Bernabe coming in, Jens, you know, these guys there, that they know how Ange wants to play. Um, and if they play the Champions League games, then the, the, the midweek games, then the, the games at the weekend, you can make changes without any, any problems. Yeah, and he, he kind of spoke about that as well. And I think at the moment it feels as if we've not almost not got enough games because we, we do have players like Bernabe. Uh, Moy, you know, numerous other players, Yakimakis, even someone like him, uh, Abada, mm-hmm. even who who maybe aren't getting the the starts they should be just because yeah. we're only playing half of the amount of games. So he did say that we're I think we've arranged some bounce games coming up to to give these players some some game time so that they're ready to step in if we do have you know injuries, suspensions, that kind of stuff. In terms of Sunday, Kilmarnock, Rugby Park. Any good memories from from Rugby Park from from your playing days? Certainly a couple of disappointing ones, but some good uh, ones as well. Yeah, we won won a title down there as well in the last day uh, with Martin. Um, it was one 0 I think it was Stillian that scored it. So aye, uh, good and bad. It's always a, a tough place. I think it's probably tougher now because of the surface. You know that 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 definitely helps the command up players and the training every day. It's not it's not the best, um, but. You know, it's not anything new to the players. They've, they've used it over the last number of years since I've had it. Um, but you'd expect them there to go there and, and perform the way Ange want to get the tempo up uh, and make sure they, they get the three points. How do you deal with a surface like that if you're a passing team like Celtic? Uh, again, it's... I mean, it's just one of the things you've got to deal with. It. You've just got to find a way to win. You've got to find out a, a solution. Um, you know, over the years, there's been horrendous. I mean, the one that Dunfermline used to have when they first done mm-hmm. that, that was the worst. The, oh, the four, worst. wasn't it? Terrible. Yeah, it was, like, it was like tiles, big tiles. You know, and uh, fortunately, they got rid of it. But it was you, you weren't sure what footwear to, to wear. Uh, although Bobo just still wore his big silver <laughs> uh, studs on. Yeah. <laughs> You're all wearing, some boys wearing trainers or like little pimples, Bobo still wore these massive uh, metal studs on it. Uh, but no, I think that's the, the biggest thing is then, you know, uh, dealing with it. You have to deal with it, you know, going there, Livingston as well, tough places to go. 
because because of the surface. But um, they, they can be crucial that they, they, they get the three points there. But we know Ange is going to do that. Ange isn't really going to be, you know, using it as an excuse at all. I think that the message will, will very much be, you know, let's go and show we can even play this great football, you know, even on a, a surface that maybe isn't quite as good. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't think it's going to be a, ma- a major factor in our preparation for the game. Having said that, would, would you change the team at all? Do you think Ange will change the team at all with the pitch in mind? I mean, would a player like Yakimakis be a better option than Kyogo on a pitch like that, for example? Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the manager does. Yeah, again, it's just that centre point. Um, you know, is it, is it going to be space for him to run into and stretch the game? A big pitch. It's it's not too bad, but you might want that centre centre point the, the players to bounce off of. You know, when it gets physical, because you'd imagine that's that's the way the game will go. Uh, you know, and they'll get in their faces and try and stop them. Uh, and you know they might want that physical presence as well up through the middle, the players to, to bounce off him. So, but the good thing is, I said he's got the options there. He, he can, if it's not working, he can change things around. And I think if you know Yakimakis started, Abada started, you know whoever else, there wouldn't be major concern from the support. We've, we've got those options, and I think we all feel you know pretty comfortable about that. Um, so no real troubles. You think we'll be all right in the end, as much as it's a, a tough looking game on Sunday. Yeah, I think that for for every game, to be honest. I think <laughs> every, um, you know, you, you have that the the belief in the squad uh, and the players because you've seen it in the past them handling it. You've seen them handling uh, you know different different venues, but different teams the way they play and. As I said, you've got faith in the players now because you've seen the players doing it. Uh, you know, ones that hadn't seen much of last year, Jack and Marcus on the bench to come on, who's I think he's been great since since he came. Yeah, really good interview with him during the week as well with the Celtic View podcast, chatting about his uh, newborn baby girl, um, flash cars. He basically spoke about everything. Um, so yeah, I really like him as well. We'll move on then, Jackie, and chat a little bit about the the Champions League draw that is just 15 days away now, remarkably. I don't think we'll speak to you before then. What are your hopes and expectations for for this draw? Uh, To be honest, as a player, you always wanted the best, to play against the best, to go to the places. The one one, one I always kind of wanted to go to was Madrid, Real Madrid. Uh, obviously at Barcelona quite a few times over over the years, so it'd be nice to get a, a big one. I know where they look for and go look for a, an easier draw, but Champions League you don't really get easy draw anyway. <laughs> you maybe get a, a team that's maybe not as big a name, but they're still very very good sides. So I think um, you know a team like Real Madrid, something like that, PSG. Uh, you want the you want the big names because. Uh, I'm sure the players will be the same. They want to go and test themselves against the best uh, to see where the team's at, you know, uh, to see how they can compete against them. And that, as a professional, that's what I wanted to do. Mm. I think I'd be looking for one major team for a bit of glamour and then maybe two that we could certainly compete with. That would be the the kind of dream scenario for me. Don't fancy an English team at all. I've I've heard all of these, you know, people asked and no no one ever says England. Yeah, Yeah. good. Liverpool or something like that. Yeah, I I think um, I think it'd be good to to get that as well. Just from you know uh, the history and everything else, and then we'll sit and waiting, but excited for two weeks before the draw to see who we're going to get. And two two months, Jackie. I know exactly. Yeah, but uh, you know that I think that's that's a good thing. You know, you you're waiting for that, uh, and it helps. It helps everybody. You know, and the, especially attracting players you know you're in the Champions League and that's that's what you want definitely as we say 15 days is all we have to wait um, for the Champions League draw there's a 
a bit of qualifying still to be done for some teams, but we are comfortably in the group stage. And yeah, we'll catch up with you at some stage, Jackie, when we'll, we'll probably be in the midst of a Champions League group stage campaign. It may be Real Madrid we're playing the next time we have you on, which is, is pretty exciting. Um, thanks once again. We'll catch up with you soon. Thanks, everyone, for watching this. Don't forget to subscribe. We are now within 100 of 32,000. So um, let's get to there as soon as possible. Back tomorrow.